Hey, it's Tom here with another houseplant care video. Today we're talking about the Dracaena marginata, otherwise known as the Madagascan dragon tree. They're very easy, very, very simple to look after. They're pretty cheap as well in terms of houseplants. Not when they're this size, but when they're small, sometimes they're like a pound or a dollar in some stores. Very, they're small, but they're very cheap. They're very, very common, easy to propagate. Which we'll cover later on in the video but they're incredibly long-lived um this one here is actually i would say potentially my oldest house plant and i've had it for 20 years maybe um unfortunately they don't look the best on camera because of angles and positioning of how i'm filming what i do is i insert some footage so you can have a look at what they look like maybe from a distance that kind of thing so yes you, you can see them um they're very, very easy, really adaptable houseplants, and it's quite interesting how they grow as well. I really, really like them. I definitely recommend them to new people to houseplants. And even if you're an expert and you know a lot about houseplants as it is, I still think they can fit into a lot of collections. Quite slow. Because these are such popular houseplants, there are a lot of cultivars and varieties available. I'd say potentially these two are possibly the most common ones you can get. This is classed as the original. I think it's, I'll put, I'll put the names on the screen. I'm not sure this is this one. I'll put down what it's called. And this one here is also quite popular as well. Again, I'll put the name. But there's so, so many choices to pick from. I just can't even, I can't list them all. There's so many. Um, if you go to a garden center, you'll see some of them have yellow leaves. The banding is really, really nice. Some of them have um, red, really like pinks. Really, really impressive. They're all roughly the same care guide, uh, care requirements. There's nothing specifically different about the variety that you get. They don't need anything really different. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. There's one other kind of outlier, which is also within the, the species um, and genus, um, which is Dracaena Draco or something, or Tarzan it goes by sometimes, which is a little bit different. The leaves are wider and a bit thicker, and the stems are thicker as well. It, it's good, I've had that before. Um, unfortunately, it's died. Um, I blame my my mum for that. But yeah, it's gone. So unfortunately, it has finished. They like it bright. That's what they want. They don't like full sun. Avoid midday sun. It's too much. Um, early morning sun's fine. Um, late evening's fine as well. No problems whatsoever. And you can, of course, have some shaded sun in the noon. Say it's in, set into your room and the blinds are down or something. And lights filtering through that's all fine they just don't like sitting in harsh direct noon sunlight it's, it's quite it's too much it burns it it just doesn't look great um this one is grown in low light they can deal with that they just you just won't get much leaf growth basically this one is in low light it's slow growing now this one's in more light and it's significantly bigger from the footage you saw earlier or maybe i'll put some more in here i don't know but you can see the difference in how they look um more light equals more growth and a healthier overall plant, but they can cope with lower light positions if necessary. In terms of water, they are quite thirsty plants, but they can cope with longer periods without watering. It's, it's hard to describe, but basically, if you give them water, they will be very thirsty and they will be very grateful and they will guzzle it all up. Uh, but they can still cope quite well without it. What it most likely is, is the stems probably contain a lot of water, a bit like succulents. They can hold on to the water for quite a while. So they never really seem to suffer for long periods of time. If you let, you can let the entire soil dry out and they can cope with that for a few days. And then what you'll notice is the leaves, they kind of hold themselves upright, but when they're dehydrated, when they need water, they kind of flop a little bit. They kind of become a lot more, a little bit washed out, a bit grayed maybe, and, it's time to water at that point. That might not really answer the question. Um, basically, water them well. You can wait until the top couple of inches have dried out and then water them again. Or if necessary, you can wait until the entire pot of medium's dried out. As long as you water it a few days after that has happened, there shouldn't be any, any ill effects. Just be careful of overwatering. Because they are stem plants, um, cane plants, sorry, they, they can take on a lot of water and they can just rot. The stems can literally just turn into mush. I've seen it happen many times. So just be cautious about how much you give it. They are thirsty plants, but let them dry out between waterings and you shouldn't have any problems. They can be fussy about humidity levels. They 
really want it high, really high humidity. And my house, I would say, is usually quite high, um, 60%, sometimes even 70 in a really humid day. And even then, they can still be fussy about it. They, they're very temperamental. But I, I feel like the brown tips are part of the plant. You just kind of grow to accept them. If they become really disfiguring, you can just snip them off. It's fine. And because the leaves are replaced every couple of years anyway, they completely renew all the leaves. Then they, can't, they do eventually go, so it's not the end of the world. Really, really low humidity could cause problems with your plant. So you may need to be cautious in those scenarios. But otherwise, yeah, it, it probably won't be a problem for most people. These are tropical house plants, so as you might expect, they do like it warm. But they will cope quite easily with cooler temperatures that most of us experience um, during the year. Yeah, and um, what you'll notice, if the temperature drops, they'll be fine. When I'm talking dropping, I just mean chilled. Like, these are indoor house plants, especially in areas which come, you know, get freezing temperatures. There's no way these plants should be outside. Any um, 10 degrees, um, uh, Celsius, and that is something Fahrenheit. I need to do the conversion. I'm British. We don't know. I'm going to put it here. What that is? Um, don't go lower than that. So if if your temperature outside goes, just say, just say you put them outside. If the temperature is growing going lower, bring them back inside before they reach that temperature, or you will end up with problems. Inside, if you keep them inside, as soon as the temperature drops a little bit maybe 15 degrees, which is again, Fahrenheit, then the growth stops. You'll get no more growth. They go, it's almost like they go dormant. So you, it will stop. Usually that's wind, um, autumn, fall, um, into early spring, or through that period of time, you'll get no growth whatsoever. That's normal, that's fine, that's to be expected. As soon as spring comes around, as soon as it gets warmer again, as soon as it's summer, bang, you'll get loads of growth. It's really good. It's, not something you need to do that often. Um, confession, these plants have been in the same pots for five years. It's too long. They've been there for about five years. Um, relatively speaking, they just need a small pot compared to how tall they can get. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect them significantly. But if you're a repotter and you enjoy doing it, maybe every year, it's fine. They, they won't complain about that. So feel free to repot as much as you need. Um, the roots are quite vigorous. They're not going to be really damaged by repotting, so just go for it. Um, but like I said, you don't have to do it that often, but you can if you want to. In terms of the potting medium, anything's fine, really. Um, they don't like really open potting mediums, so aeroid mixes probably should be avoided. They, they want something to get their teeth into, essentially. Um, coconut core? like quite a lot, maybe 90%, maybe even 100% of that would be fine. They, they're not, honestly, they're so easy going. They, they, they're not particularly fussy. So if, if the potting medium is too loose, what will happen is potentially the pot could, uh, the plant, sorry, could literally rock out of the pot. So you do need a bit of security, a bit of anchorage, is that a word? Um, where you, you want something that they can get get their roots into and grip hold of. But if you have really porous, big, chunky mixes, it might not work like that. They can easily be pulled out. So I'd avoid those, but anything else is pretty much fair game. Here is how to propagate the dragon tree easily. And it is easy. How should we start? Which one should we do? The only way to do it really is through stem cuttings. You need to cut the stem. I will show you some videos of me doing it on a plant and demonstrating how to do it, but it's really straightforward. Uh, essentially, what you want to do is cut the stem. Be brave. Don't be scared. A lot of people are worried about this and it can drastically change the look of your plant. So do be careful. Make sure, in, in the sense that only do it if you're happy that your plant is going to look radically different. But if it's, say, reached the ceiling or it's just too tall or it's out of control, or you just want more of these plants, then do it. It's a very high chance of success. So you take the cutting, you then have two options. You can either plant it directly into soil and try and use something similar to what the parent plant was growing in, because you know that it works, if you know what I mean. Um, you can put it straight into soil and off you go. Uh, if you are nervous or you want an extra safety measure, you can use water, water propagation. And it just involves you popping it into a little vase of water and crossing your fingers. No, I'm joking. There's no need to cross your fingers. There is a good chance of it working. 
I did this propagation cutting in winter, the worst possible time of the year to actually propagate plants, in my opinion, due to how cold it tends to be and how little light there is. But look, here we go. The roots, it's fine. It's, you know, it's, it's very reliable. It's very, very, very reliable that it's going to root, basically, which is what you want. Uh, leave it in this jar. It's already time now. This, this has been ready for a long time. It's just taken me a while to shoot this video in terms of getting around to it. But I could have put this into soil weeks ago. Um, I'm going to do it now. But as you can see, the roots are huge. They're lifting outside of the vase. It's pushed the stem cutting out of the vase itself. That was actually in, um, touching the bottom when I first pull it in. And now look, it's literally pushing itself out, reaching outwards. Those tap roots, like I mentioned earlier, can be quite strong. Um, so yeah, it's time to put it into soil. I mentioned earlier in my video that the dragon tree is a false palm, which means that the, it's hard to describe, but basically the stem will get longer and longer and longer. And on the stems, you'll see where the leaves used to be. But it feels rough if you've ever run your fingers along them. And there, there were leaves there, which the plant has removed. So a lot of people will say, I've got your leaves, Tom. All my leaves are coming off the plant. And sometimes they send me photos and they, at the base of the plant, there might be 20 leaves on the collapse. It looks like there's a problem happening, but it's okay. In most cases, anyway, it's normal. As long as it's the oldest leaves that are going yellow and falling off, and a lot, it can happen a lot in a very short space of time, you could literally be pulling off three or four leaves a day um, for a couple of weeks. It can be quite scary. It looks like something's happened, but it's normal. So pests can be a problem with these plants. I've only had really one experience, and that was a quite a few years ago now, and that was with mealybugs. But mealybugs, aphids, all those type of things can be a problem. Um, a lot of people on our website will comment in the comments just to say and upload photos. I'll put some up so you can have a look. Um, they are a problem for some people. The best way to do is to treat them. You need to get them treated. They can devastate the plant if you allow them to exist and carry on damaging your plant. So do get rid of them. Insecticide soap, neem oil can all help. Um, also, because there isn't a huge amount of foliage, sometimes just manually sort of dislodging them, picking them off, can do a massive amount of benefit to the plant. So just get rid of them. Don't allow them to go unchecked because they can do serious damage in the long term. So I think that's it for this house plant. They, as I've covered already, they can be very long lived. So I am expecting people to tell me in the comments that they have plants that they've had for decades and they haven't beat. Looking forward to hearing that. I want to hear about your experiences, share your tips. Any further questions, just put them below and I will respond. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching today. Thank you for, if you've made it to the end, thank you very much for that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.